Hi, and welcome to Trex Academy, where you can learn everything you need to know about building your deck project. I'm Devin, and in this video, you'll learn how to install Trex fascia. Let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, Lindsay's already gotten started on our first step of installing that Trex fascia. Yeah. That's to install our spacers. So what we're using for this is a rot resistant material. These are 3 16 by one inch wide. Okay. Okay. Now were these pre-cut to length? No, in fact, we just have a piece of exterior grade trim right here and they usually come in eight foot lengths, right? Okay. That's what we found this in. And then from that single piece, we can cut multiple spacers. Obviously you're just gonna do that at the height of that front rim joist. Got it. Okay, so as we're bringing this in, the reason this is so important is because got another mock-up for you here. Great. So we have our deck, our deck board here. That's going to be flush with that front rim joist. Mm -hmm. And then as we bring in our fascia, we want to make sure the top of the fascia is going to be flush with that deck board. Got it. The problem is that if we didn't have our spacers, there's no room for airflow. There's no room for debris or water to flow through. Mm -hmm. So then obviously adding the spacers is going to add all that benefit. Now we have some room for that debris to get cleared out, for water to flush that out. And it also allows for airflow, which is great for that front rim joist. It's going to let it breathe. It's just going to extend the life of our deck frame. Makes sense. Now, is the size important? So you said this was an inch by 3 16 right. No, it's not necessarily important. Okay. I would stay around quarter inch, 3 16 somewhere in that. I definitely wouldn't go under, because then it's going to really defeat the purpose of it, right? Go any larger than that, obviously you're going to start to get a pretty large gap yeah. between that fascia, so you have to think about that. Right. But then on the inverse, if you go too small, if you go an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth, kind, kind of defeats, defeats the purpose. Yeah, now yeah. you don't have room for that water, no room for debris to flow through. Got it. Okay. Now is this That's, the only material that you can use, or can you essentially DIY your own space. Absolutely, anything rot resistant. Again, that really is the key. You want something that's gonna last as long as the rest of your deck. Got it. So you could take just some pressure treated lumber, right? So obviously the frame is made out of that. Mm -hmm. So pressure treated lumber will be just fine. Cool. Okay, all right. So from here, we're just gonna continue installing the rest of those spacers. All right. I'll start down on the far end and just meet you in the middle. Sounds good. Okay. Yep. And as we're installing those, we're making sure to keep those nine inches on center. So you can see our next one's gonna go right here. Got everything marked out for us. And the reason that we're doing that is as we install that Trex fascia, mm -hmm. the maximum span that we can have for those fasteners is gonna be 18 inches on center. Now we have a guideline. We know we'll have two fasteners here, two fasteners there. So we can go straight through those spacers, but we have another spacer in the middle that's just gonna make sure that we have support on that mid span. Cool. Okay? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start down there. All I'll right. meet you in the middle. Sounds good. All right, this is really coming together. Yeah, it is. Looking really nice. Yeah. Okay. Like All right, I am too. great down here. Good? Yeah, ready to clamp. Get that clamped in place so we can work hands free. Sure. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Good? Yeah, cool. I'm good. So we also have some scrap two by fours that we're using right here. Really nice, especially, again, to be hands free because we were able to just push the top of our fascia right up against that. Yeah, makes it nice and flush. Yeah, and now we know that it's flush. So from here, we're gonna be checking to make sure that that's flush all the way across mm -hmm. using another scrap piece of two by four. And we'll do that as we're fastening it to the rim joist. So while we're doing this, we do have a few different options, but we're mainly gonna focus on two that we have here today. Okay. So what we're gonna be using are some fascia screws. We have two different types. We have this one here, color doesn't really matter because we're gonna seal this up with the plug on the outside. This is a composite plug. You can see we've already pre-drilled for. Yeah, and pre-drilling those holes, just much easier to do when the fish is laying on top of a couple of sawhorses yeah. versus when we have it clamped Instead up. Instead of doing on that right here. Yeah. Right. So whenever we're using this fascia screw, we're using that in conjunction with a specialized two-stage bit. So the first one is gonna drill a hole larger than the shank of our screw. And then the second one is gonna set a recess to the depth to fit the head of this fastener, but also it's gonna fit that composite plug. Okay, so it's gonna be really nice. It's gonna look good. The other fastener we have, same fastener, 
same length, everything's similar, except this one is matched to the color of face you're using. Got it. So instead of setting that depth as far as it is, it'll actually be a little more shallow, so that recess will actually just go the depth of the head of our fastener. Okay. Yeah. So the main difference between the two fastening options is that really just aesthetics. Right, it really is. One is going to be completely sealed up with her composite plug, which is going to look great. This is also going to look really good because instead of it being, you know, a, a gray screw right here, mm -hmm. this is going to blend in pretty well and it's going to be set flush at the front of that fascia. Nice. Now, I did notice that these fasteners aren't threaded all the way to the top. Is there right. a reason for that? Yeah, so we touched on it just briefly before, but when I was mentioning that the hole that you're gonna drill is actually larger than the shank, mm -hmm. it's on purpose. That's so that as things move around, as that deck moves, right? We've talked about expansion and contraction. Yeah, and the frame is gonna expand and contract at a different, different rate, rate and different times yeah. than the actual composite. Exactly. And so what we want, we wanna make sure that this is actually floating. If we were to put threads in that hole or have threads all the way up, that kind of defeats the purpose. Right, it would like work against it. Exactly. Yeah. So now it's gonna have plenty of space to be able to move around and contract and expand. Great. Okay, all right, so I think we're ready to go ahead and start fastening. Go ahead and install this Trex fascia. Sounds good. All right, so you start on this end. I'm gonna start right here and then we'll just work to the left. All right. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. All of our fascia is installed, and the next thing we'll be moving on to is gonna be installing our railing. So if you'd like to see a video on that and a whole lot more covering the entire deck building process, you can go to trex.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching.